Hi there, I'm David Tweedy with Okokoka Live, and this is the Okokoka Kitchen Project. In this series, myself and Daphne Bennick of the Back Porch Restaurant are going to take you inside the kitchen and lives of some of the innovative chefs and cooks that live right here on this remote island of Okokoka. So let's go! Well, today we're going to visit with Garrett Kalna. He's the owner and head brewer of 1718 Brewery. And we're going to find out how to make an oyster stout as well. So let's go. Yeah. This is Garrick. He is the uh, owner proprietor of uh, 1718 Brewery right here on Ocracoke Island. And we're going to talk with him today about a new oyster stout that you're working on. Yeah. As well as how you got into uh, starting this whole uh, uh, brewery right here on Ocracoke. So, yeah. so yeah. a couple of nights ago we had a uh, Halloween plus pirate festival. Right. in which uh, Fletcher and Heather had a bunch of oysters from their oyster uh, farm. Yeah. And they brought those out, and these are the beginnings of making this oyster stout that you're working on, is that right? We uh, did a collab with, with Kill Devil rum, and we're gonna age the beer in the rum barrels, and then Devil Shoals Oyster with Fletcher and Heather. So they came out and shucked a bunch of oysters, raw and steamed, and we, uh, we kept some for ourselves, which we're having for lunch right now. <laughs> and then also took all the empty shells that we had, and we're going to use those and integrate that into the beer uh, for the flavor and the calcium, the minerals of the beer as well. So it's a three-way joint effort here. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. It's going to be an imperial oyster stout aged in rum barrel. So how long will that process take? It's going to take... Um, we're hoping for Christmas we'll be able to release the non barrel aged oyster style. Mm -hmm. And then three, six months, 12 months later, we're not sure how long it's going to take for it. We'll test it, keep testing it, and that's the hard part of the job. Is this the first time you've done an oyster style like this? Or we have, done, have done a smaller um, ABV couple. Actually, it's funny, I pulled my recipe up. It was November 2nd, which, which is a day off of today. But 2017 was the last time wow. we did it. So we, we did it the same way. We did an oyster roast, but much smaller scale. Uh -huh. This is the first time we've done something this big and going to age it in rum barrels. So walk us through the process here. The whole process starts where we take our grain from the mill in the grain room, and we run it up this auger here, and it drops into the mass tun. And that's what's going on over here. It's like a big cereal cooker. And we'll bring our um, hot water, which is called hot liquor. Water that you use to brew is called liquor. We'll bring that over and we'll steep it all right there. And we'll extract, um, convert the starches to sugars. And depending on the temperature and the minerals of the water profile, depends on what kind of sugar change you make. And then that affects the yeast. And the yeast can eat simple sugars quicker, make more alcohol. A more complex sugar chains will leave some body behind and some residual sweetness and that's where you get a thicker fuller beer mm -hmm. versus a really thin light bright beer and so it's all about what kind of sugars you make in the mashing process it's, if you come over here you can see it's 147.4 degrees in the mash time right now and so we let this oyster steam and cook in there which they opened up and some of the brine went into the mash. And then we took them out and that's what we're going to eat for lunch. And then, and now we're, what's called watering, we're taking what's in from underneath the bottom of the mash tun, we're bringing it over into this kettle here. And this is called the kettle, boil kettle. We're about to, we're going to boil it. And while we boil it, we're going to take these oyster shells, which we have in here, 
And this is from the oyster roast. And there are 15 dozen oysters in here, oyster shells. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna recirc the, the boiling wort through these shells. What that's gonna do is it's gonna pull off all that brining mollusk meat and um, break down the calcium in the shells. Um, and that gives that beer a really silky mouthfeel. Wow. So historically, this beer was uh, made um, because they didn't, they didn't understand, understand water chemistry, but they knew oyster shells made the water softer and, and it made the beer feel taste smoother. And so use, they use this as a buffer because when you have dark rain, they're very acidic. Uh, and this is very high in calcium, so it's, you know, it's a balance of the pH to get the proper pH in it, and it allowed them to get better extraction and make a better beer. So, so how, how long has this recipe been around then, or the idea of using oysters in, oyster in stout? A long time. Uh, I don't know the exact date. I wish I did. Uh, but I'm going to say it's going back probably over 500 years. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But so it was used back in the day when they didn't understand water at all. Mm -hmm. Just how you put like clamshells around a fig tree. Yeah. Same thing, they don't like the acidity of the soil. That breaks down and it puts that, that carbonic um, carbonate, calcium carbonate into the soil, and it gives them a neutral pH. That's what they enjoy. Uh -huh. Same concept with beer and, and, and uh, we're monitoring the pH all the time. That's an incredible amount of chemistry. Um, so this was a hobby for you for a, a long while, wasn't it? Until yes. You decided to take it up a notch, and is that when you went to Colorado for? And was that one of the reasons? Um, well, you out there for actually, a or what? I went out there to play, oh, okay. and uh, beers big out there, oh. and I started brewing in a five-gallon bucket and as a hobby, and I loved it. And um, so I, I just brewed, and then when I came back and finished college, I, I brought brought it back to Charlotte, is what I, in North Carolina, where I finished, and uh, I brought it back there, and I brewed. As uh, like just as a hobby, like to keep our house full of beer uh -huh. <laughs> during college, and I fell in love with the process, and I love the, um, the, the the mix of the creativity side of it versus the science side of it, and how they have to come together to make you know make beer. I love uh, seeing the sign, all the different beers that you have to offer up on the board. They just seem so creative, and it's like yeah. a smorgasbord up there. Well. I can't take credit for any of the artwork. That's <laughs> Charlie, she does all that. But um, all of us here, Dalton, my, you know, my son, and Kevin, and we all kind of come together and figure out what kind of beers we'd like to brew. And Jackie, my wife, always has ultimate input. Like, she wants a sour, you know, uh -huh. we're gonna make a sour. You know, she loves a brunch, so she kind of created that concept. And um, so it's just all of us coming together and trying to figure out what we'd like to do. And we brew what we like to drink. And, Brown air and have fun with it. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and so sizing up from doing it as a hobby to something that is this large and this much of an investment, did you have to take classes or, or how do you how do you do that transition? Well, it was um, it was a big jump. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but uh, I was brewing on something probably about this size that you see here. It's one barrel. Um, as a matter of fact, there's there's one of the con containers I was brewing in. Oh. Right Behind the coffee shop, um, we called that the beer shop. Uh, we were um, basically with the idea of one day scaling up. So we were trying to document and do recipe development and, and play around and just giving beer away. We would make like um, one keg at a time. It uh -huh. takes anywhere from four to six weeks to make a beer, roughly, depending on the beer. And so, we were just playing around, and I did that for a, maybe eight, ten years. And in that course, I um, was able to go up to Outer Banks Brewing Station. Uh -huh. And I would do like um, whatever they let, let me go up there and do volunteer, two, three to one week stints. And I'd go up there and help out and learn how to learn how to scale up and how to not look at a pot and see what's going on, but understand that you have to know what's in there and uh -huh. how, uh -huh. how to how to work that and clean it and everything. So um, I did that for about five years. 
before we decided to, um, Jackie and I decided to to go go for this venture. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so we, we opened in 2017. Matter of fact, when I said my oyster stout. That was one of the uh -huh. one of the uh -huh. uh, opening beers we made. So, yeah, and I hadn't made it since, which is crazy. <laughs> but we love everyone loved it. So we're doing, we're bringing it back. Uh huh. We're gonna do it again. So what we're doing is we're bringing hot liquor over on top and letting it come on top of the grain bed. And it's it's almost like a giant coffee filter. It's filtering through all the grain and there's a little over a thousand pounds of grain in here right now. And it's filtering through all the grain and then it has a false a screen on the bottom where it comes out of the bottom as, in, as clear work. And that's what we're transferring and pumping over into here. And this is not much to see because it's, it's a dark beer with no light. So you can just see the black liquid in there right now. We'll boil this for an hour and a half. And that's when we'll, we'll start recircling through the oyster shells. Uh -huh. So this is called Warts. It's not called beer yet because it's basically sugar water. What because is it called? W-O-R-T. Wort. Wort. Uh -huh. uh, because we've taken the grain, converted sugars, and now we're adding water and we're making sugar water. And and it comes over here and we boil the sugar water, the wort, and that's where we add hops. Hops are a, a, bit, a plant with a bittering oil that balances the sweetness. And that's, we have the hops here and then we boil it and that'll break, pull the oils out of the plant and, and bring that into the beer. And then we move over, we'll cool it down and then we'll go into one of these fermenters that you see over here. So the yeast actually makes the beer. We make wort, then the yeast does this thing there's and makes the, the beer. Yeah. So there's all different strains of yeast, and they all do. They all throw different esters or phenolics, different flavors into the beer, depending on um, depending on your grain bill and the uh, sugars you make and your mineral profile in your water. Uh, and that's where all the chemistry comes in. And then the biology is the yeast, where it's mm -hmm. actually it starts out aerobic and it and it consumes all the oxygen and it does it, so it grows and multiplies the cell growth phase and then it'll go anaerobic and once it goes anaerobic and there's no more oxygen it starts eating the sugar and making alcohol and carbon dioxide so you you basically had a tons worth of grain in one of these right how, how do you get materials on the island and 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 then off what do you do with if the mash when you're done and how does all that work yeah so uh it's a great question and then that's where the logistical issues of our code definitely come into play and we've learned over the years we've got to be two maybe three weeks ahead of our production schedule so if i order today which is wednesday i'll be lucky to get it next thursday but it'll probably be the following thursday huh. i've had to drive to greenville because some trucking companies would wait for a big enough load to come over here, <laughs> yeah. put it in the back of the pickup truck and bring it here, and then manually offload 4,000 pounds of grain. Um, but then when we're done with the grain, it's another great question. It's um, called spent grain. And we had a giant um, static aeration composter that we were using to build compost. And, uh, Dorian floated it away. And we haven't had a chance to rebuild it, but so we've been taking it and um, a bunch of people have been using it to feed their chickens and composting individually for their gardens. I should get on your list. <laughs> it's great. It's high protein and um, I mean gardens love it. Gardens go crazy. Uh, so once we get that back in production, we will be giving it away and um, using it for wherever fill you need. Well, thank you so much for yeah. this tour, and yeah. it's, it's fascinating. It's been fascinating to see this transform from the old Cafe Atlantic to this this new 1718 brewery. And <laughs> well, it's, it's been, uh, it's an honor to be in this building. Bob and Ruth are amazing people, and they're very generous and thankful that we were, you know, did something different, but still kept the building alive. And, 
we're very thankful to have them, uh, all their help. And I think a lot of the fans of the old restaurant are now fans of the 17, 18. I hope so. It's been a great synergy with Plum Point and Aaron. You know, he he does the food and we do the beer, and um, we work well. You know, we work together, but that's his own, you know, his own separate business. And um, it's been awesome to have the, us together doing this. And we've had a lot of fun. With it. A little bit of work, a lot of fun. Work was it the other way around. You know? <laughs> We've always been good at that, from the Oak Cup Coffee Company to this. It's, uh, it's uh, been fascinating to follow your journey. So. Well, thank you so much, and, and I look forward to, to uh, yeah. trying the beers, and uh, hope everybody gets a chance to come out. Perfect. You guys, whenever you're ready, and I'll let you know when this is what you sound like. Good one. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot.